my name is Danielle and welcome to Board Game Bakes. This week we're focusing on Chibi Time! Produced by AEG Games. Yeah. How do I get to AEG. Mm. And we're going to make an epic gravity defying cake using alternate layers of vanilla and chocolate cake, an Oreo frosting, and homemade meringue clouds. We could do it. Here we go! Time to get this epic adventure underway. First things first, prep your decorations. The gravity defying component seems like a good, slightly intimidating place to start. You'll need some wire and a bamboo rod. Coil the wire around the bamboo rod, leaving enough space on the bottom for the stick to go into the cake and give it enough support. After an inch of coil, branch out with a one and a half inch segment, fold the wire over itself and twist it. This will be where your meringue clouds will rest. Repeat the process two more times with coiling and the extensions. And at the top, use the same fold and twist method to create the desired shape for your sheep. It looks like it has one leg out and one leg back. Yeah, you don't want to try and eat your sheep decoration. I'm going all in with this video and show you how I make my marshmallow fondant too. Take 10 ounces of mini marshmallows, mix in three tablespoons of water, stir to coat all the marshmallows with the water. At this point, microwave it at 30 second increments until the marshmallows form one huge big blob. So you shouldn't be able to see the individual spots at all. Mix in four cups of sifted powdered sugar. I would likely need more powdered sugar, but it can be added during the kneading phase and this way you don't get a giant clump that you can't do anything with because that may have happened to me multiple times before. <laughs> Knead the fondant and roll in powdered sugar until it's no longer super sticky. You can put Crisco on your hands to help it not stick and prevent dyeing your hands different colors because that never happens to me. <laughs> Time to make it look more like a sheep. Dye some fondant light blue for the shirt and darker blue for the pants. Mold the fondant on the metal wires like clay and use your fingers to seal the edges. Next, dye some fondant brown to make the sheep's teddy bear. How cute. It's best to have a picture available to try because it's kind of like a blocky shape. Obviously, you probably won't be looking at it for the rest of the sheep too, but for doing the bear as well. Now, dye some fondant black. Wow. My fingers look lovely. <laughs> Thankfully, the head is just white, so you don't need to dye that. Place the black and some yellow spots on the head to create the face. You can also add a little dot of pink for the nose. Use the black to give the sheep some hands and feet. And while you're down there working on the feet, create some hot pink. Yeah, it's pretty hot pink fondant to give them cozy pink slippers. Use extra white fondant to color up the wire and bamboo stick. To make the fence, because the sheep needs to jump over a fence, cut out bamboo rod and make sure it has at least three inches above the cake with a little on the bottom for support. Wrap white fondant around the poles and measure some fence posts so that they're at least approximately the same size for a fence and stick them along a long fondant beam. In hindsight, mine broke a little bit, so if you, at this stage, fortified them with some royal icing, it'd probably be more stable in the end. Next, create a dark pinkish purple for the nightmare. Roll out the fondant and cut out the desired shape to make the game figure. And make sure you add the pink eyes angled down to make it look nice and evil. Time to make our sheep tokens. Use any piece of cardboard to create a stencil. Have a piece for the outline, the white body, and the head. Cut out four white pieces. And then use dye to create pink. yellow, blue, and purple fondant that can be used to cut out the head and outline pieces. Use water to glue your pieces together. Once dry, Add two small pieces of fondant to make the eyes. And after that dries again, <laughs> just to show you how long I worked on this cake, 
add a line to the pupils. Phew. Okay, stay with me. Meringue time. The cake is not complete without its little clouds. <laughs> Mix three egg whites on medium speed until frothy. Add a quarter teaspoon of cream of tartar and continue mixing until soft peaks form. At this point, increase the mixture speed to high <laughs> and gradually add the sugar one tablespoon at a time. Make sure the sugar is dissolved before adding more. Once the mixture has turned glossy and bright white, add one teaspoon of vanilla extract. To test if your meringue is done, rub some between your fingers and make sure it's not grainy. Place the batter in a piping bag with a large circle attachment. Pipe out your clouds. Make smaller clouds to place on the actual cake and larger ones for the gravity defying element. Bake at 200 degrees Fahrenheit for an hour and a half. Wow, <laughs> definitely low and slow. When done, they should be able to be easily lifted off the parchment paper and you wanna leave them in the oven overnight to dry out. Last component to create before we put it all together. Time to make a double batch of Oreo frosting. Mix two cups or four sticks of butter at medium speed until creamy. Add a half a teaspoon of salt if using unsalted butter, or you could go up to a teaspoon depending on how salty you want it to be. Add in three cups of powdered sugar until it's incorporated. Add two teaspoons of vanilla and four tablespoons of heavy cream. Mix to combine. Either use a food processor, food processor or aggression to crush 20 Oreos. Yeah, 20 Oreos until it's mostly powder. Mix the Oreo powder into your frosting and the icing can be stored in the fridge and remix later. So this way you can make it ahead of time and don't have to do everything all at once. For this cake, we need a large quantity of navy blue fondant. So we're gonna make that for the outside. Keep adding blue and black and kneading until you get the desired color that's found in the box. It's finally time to assemble. Use two box cake mixes to create four nine inch cakes of your choice. I went with alternating vanilla or yellow cake and chocolate. Trim the cake so the tops are flat. To prepare the cake board, cut a small circle where you want the sheet to be sticking out and I found a straw that could hold the bamboo pole and I taped that in place and added a separate bamboo one to kind of be the place marker and help my cakes go on the board. Add a drop of frosting to the cake board so that the cake stay put. Put the first layer of cake on the stand. Apply a thin layer of frosting. And you're gonna repeat this process with alternating yellow and chocolate cakes, ending with a cake on top. Place the cake in the fridge for a few minutes to set. Trim the outer layer of the cake with a large knife so the edges are even. Add a thin layer of frosting on the whole cake and the theory is that it'll catch the crumbs and help your final layer be nice and smooth. Once you've applied the thin layer over the cake, return the cake to the fridge and let the icing slightly harden. At this point, add a thick layer of your frosting on the outside to complete the cake and make it as smooth as possible with nice crisp edges on top. It's possible. You just gotta keep practicing, I think. Next, roll out your dark blue fondant to about an eighth of an inch thickness. Remove the large bamboo rod and break it so that only a small piece is sticking out. A big one may cause a rip. Just saying. Not like that happened the first time. <laughs> Start by smoothing the fondant on top, then smoothing the edges by gently pulling the folds out until they reach the bottom. Remove any excess fondant. Now you get to add all the fun decorations to the cake. Apply water to the back of the nightmare and gently place it onto the cake. Repeat the process with all the little sheeps we made. Use a thick white royal icing to add a moon to the center of the cake and lines and numbers to the top of the cake to make it look like the game board. We're almost there. Now you get to stick your fence into the cake. If it has some difficulties, you can prop it up a little bit and add some extra royal icing to give it some support. Place the small marine clouds around the top of the cake and around the bottom. Attach the large cloud meringues to the gravity defying element. Stick in the cake and it's your flag of victory! Woohoo! You did it!
thanks for watching another episode of Board Game Beaks. I hope you enjoyed this massive sheepy time cake. And I'm at a point where I'm looking for suggestions. What games would you like me to feature on the show? Comment below which games you'd like me to feature. And while you're down there, make sure you hit subscribe and you can even ring that bell so you know whenever I release a video. Keep playing games and keep them sweet. Bye! Dun 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 boom 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 dun 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 dun